Hello, everybody. Today is Wednesday, September 18th, and I'm trying to get you some kind of a view. I apologize. I cannot really see out here as the sun is shining from behind me, which is shining on the display on the phone. So I'm hoping you can see a little bit of the horses somewhere. There are two horses that are nearby, but they're just out of the left side of the camera. So maybe at some point they'll mosey this way, but they seem to be heading the other direction. <laughs> this morning. Well, yes, this morning for me, it was very, very early this morning when a couple of brothers and sisters from across the pond on the other side of the ocean from me were speaking uh, this morning about really tough, really tough situations that happen to us in life, specifically things such as sudden death of people we care about. And it's a big deal to God. It's a big deal to God, and it's, a, it, it's also a big deal to God beyond just what it means um, to to him to have to go through these things with the persons that are suddenly crossing over, but as well the loved ones that are left here on the earth that care about said certain persons that crossed over suddenly. And... <clears throat> Sometimes we're aware people are going to pass but in a number of different ways. Sometimes there's no outward signs, but you just have a knowingness deep down inside, like the truth of their destiny scrolls being revealed to you. In moments like that, as well as every other moment, we should heed that still small voice inside that nudges us toward letting the others know just exactly what they mean to us and how amazingly um, just blessed and, and, and how incredibly full our lives became because that person was here at such a time that we were, and we were able to know them and to love them and to appreciate them. How they were able to supplement our lives in some way, shape, or form, feeding into us. Because every person that we come in contact with has the ability to feed into you something that you didn't have before, didn't know before, didn't recognize before, or didn't see the beauty of in the same way, but they did. And sometimes you just have a knowingness because there are outward signs that someone possibly could be departing from this realm soon, such as when people get diagnoses of, of different ailments and things that can happen. And in times like those, still, it's a roller coaster ride with people's health in this realm, isn't it? One minute you can get a diagnosis of this and the next another and it's all science based and it's not spiritually based and so as with all things that tend to be just in the material and the temporal it's all over the place depending on many factors many many factors that play out in the spirit realm as well as this material realm and you could get a word from doctors that Someone has turned the corner, this, that, and the other, and then they end up passing. And you're like, what? Right? There are so many factors involved. And then someone can be recovering from something, and you think that the storm has passed, and then a sudden accident or something happens. Or someone's in complete health, and then, you know, I mean, they run marathons and whatever, and then the next day they're gone. Somehow they had a heart attack or a brain aneurysm, and, and we don't understand all these things. You know, but either way, sudden death or sudden departure from this realm into the next is on the hearts and minds of many people, including God. And nothing is without reason and nothing is coincidental with God in the way that we think of coincidence or happenstance or random, if you will. Because co with incident is a partnership of incident. Co meaning together, more than one. 
like co-labor, co-exist. So it's an incident that happens to affect two different people or, or things at the same time that is somehow seeming to be related. Usually there is a, a relationship in some sense. But it's been really heavy on the Lord's heart. Um, and he's having people open up and be raw and share these things. And he wants to address some of these things because not only does it affect us, it affects him. It affects him profoundly in that um, there is a, if you will, a cleanup process emotionally and mentally and even physically that has to take place in this realm that God has to help those that are those that survive them on the earth. That's a big deal to him. You're a big deal to him. And that is because many of those that survive these people departing quickly, suddenly, is because they carry some kind of what the world would term or science would term or psychology would term survivor's guilt. Um, when they're really it's a phantom thing and there really shouldn't be anything like that uh, when you're a God's child anyway. Because one of the things that he has shown me is there's when there's a will, there's a way, meaning when there's a heart motive to cover something, it can be covered. Hmm. One of those things that he reminds me of is that, well, two things. One is that he's outside of time. And Lord, you're going to have to remind me to bring that up in further detail. But meaning that there, there's something we can do when God is outside of time. And the other thing is, th meaning also that you're outside of time. <laughs> remind me of that, Lord. But a, bi a big thing he wants to address is suicide. That's a sudden departure that, in hindsight, there are always signs and symptoms. But sometimes, two things, sometimes we're not very observant. And sometimes the other thing is that people can hide things very, very well. And sometimes it's a combination of both. And there are many reasons why someone will come to a determination that that departing this realm by taking their own life out of their body in some way, shape, or form is preferable or ideal even if someone is resolute enough. And you see, the truth about suicide is there's many reasons why people do that. Number one, he, is, he has assured me they're not in their right mind. They're literally not in their right mind. And we all know that that comes with an influence from the dark realm, from hell and death. But there are always reasons why someone will affiliate with hell and death in the mind and in the emotions and then follow through in the body. It's a trifecta or a perfect storm, if you will. But there, there are always reasons why, and nine times out of ten, it's from trauma. and It's been trauma inflicted in this realm that even causes someone to have suicidal ideation, even if they don't follow through with it. There's still an association, an affiliation with the thought process of death becoming one's savior. And he said, please repeat that. It's an ideation of death becoming so preferable and so more intimate with us than life or Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, that death becomes the preferable, intimate source that we go to for salvation. Isn't that funny? Because it's the complete opposite, funny as in strange, weird. 
death fundamentally is the opposite of life and death is fundamentally being set, uh, far far away from god it's estrangement and god the only one that truly is a savior is god and so the only thing death death when we partner with it can save us from is god and life there becomes this hatred for life mostly in this realm but mostly affected by the unseen realm which is a conundrum because if one were in their right mind and they knew that the unseen realm is what is afflicting this material temporal realm then we could battle with it which brings up the other topic that god wanted to speak about in address which is you don't know what you don't know until you know it and you're bankrupt until you're not until you're filled that's for for the persons that are attempting to take one's life in their own into their own hands in this realm but it's also for those survivors that survive them or outlast them in this realm and also god cares more about them than you do no matter how strongly your affections and your motives of pure heart toward them are they were his before they were ever gifted to you to share in this realm i wish in a way only i say in a way because the more you become familiar with something in this realm the more the lord has been able to help you in those areas so in a sense it's one of those situations where god works all things together for good that the enemy meant for harm right but i i was going to say there's a part of me that wishes i did not have the familiarity with suicide as much as what i have in this lifetime people around me, um, loved ones, family members, friends, acquaintances, etc., and so on. But I have. I have. And like I said, there are, there's so much, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional because hmm, if you knew how much he saved me, huh? like he saved me in so many ways in my heart and in my mind, my emotions, and even my physical life. In many ways, I found the depths of his heart, even when people would be in these situations that I'd have to face. If you have had a broken heart enough in life, a broken mind, a broken set of emotions that has affected you deeply and profoundly, even in your physical, you will have learned one thing as you become really intimate with Christ is that he's right in the smack of the middle of it with you and his desire is nothing greater than to walk you out of it in his arms as he carries you that I that I came into contact with in these situations I'm sorry I didn't I didn't think it would affect me in this way but I know that I share his emotions for these things as well and I can tell it's both of our emotions because he tends to move through my throat a lot with his emotions as we speak because it's through speech. But my heart and my chest will feel something when I'm releasing the same and I can feel both. Every person is individual and different and every person's situation and life circumstances is different and unique as well. And the way that it plays out is different and unique as well. I've seen people, I've seen situations where I've had to tell people, which is kind of, I enjoy it a little more when I get to tell people, listen, <laughs> he assures me that no matter how many times you go this route, you're not going to be able to take your life from this realm. He, There are certain people like that because what he sees is further down the road where they actually surrender to him and they get healed and it's incredible and so there are times when i've had to say i'm just letting you know he's with you and he's going to strengthen you through these times and 
the moments that you think that he isn't and that you can't take it anymore, he's right there. And he's going to show you that over and over again. And I've seen this, which is, which really isn't God specifically picking something for someone and not someone else. It's literally watching the choices that person decides to make in this realm with their free will all the way through their whole life because he's outside of time and how he's going to work everything together for good. And many of the people, including myself, who in former times have attempted suicide, have such a heart for the people that are going through similar situations because they understand it. They thoroughly understand it. And the Lord has been able to help us in some way, shape, or form. And so we have a little more insight now. But we don't have what we don't have in the past. When I was in those situations, I didn't have what it took to help anyone else. And that is that is not a, a, a situation that I should hold any guilt over myself. If you don't have money in a bank account, you just don't have it to help someone, why beat yourself up over it? Okay? If I didn't have the wisdom and the support system that I have now with God... I, did, I didn't have it. It is what it is. And I couldn't help the people in the way that I wanted to, though my heart would go out for them and I would pray for them the best that I could. And we're talking about the years before my serious lockdown in the last slightly plus decade years of my life with the Lord. But seeing as I have personal history with that myself and I know the reasons and situations as I look back now with the Lord and sort through them why these things happen there's always some sort of trauma base now trauma can be inflicted by others and oftentimes is in some way shape or form even ancestors that you don't even know that had spirits of this or that of depression and suicide that were attached to the family and it passed down through the lineage and we we tend to look at things like that like you know my great grandpa had it and then my grandma had it and then my auntie had it and then you know okay so that's familiar spirits the family was familiar with this mindset and this emotional set of circumstances and coupled with it oftentimes affiliated with death and hell oftentimes through the spirits that brought it it is charged spiritually i mean there is there are forces behind it there is a force behind it but for myself i didn't know anything about the spirit realm to the extent that i do now back then and many people are in that situation even now that the trauma that they've been through this is why the healing of the soul the spirit and the body is incredibly important to the lord do you understand that is salvation the soul the spirit and the body being saved he has an intention for all of that that's his main goal and focus that is the great commission here it'll always be the most important thing to him i didn't have that back then but i have him now I have the Lord now, and many people didn't have that when we were going through our traumas and our situations in life, and they still don't have him in that way now. Many have not truly met him, where he is, for who he is, and how much he can help, and they're not coupling with him. And the unfortunate thing is, is that that's why he needs to raise up most of us still yet into maturity so that he can have helpers with him helping where he's helping from the spirit realm and we're connected to him and he's able to work through us to hit them at, you know in the material temporal realm to be able to help as well you know that makes a big difference but you see as much as trauma and abuse and neglect and betrayal and rejection and ridiculing and mocking and all these things can have a, a traumatic effect on us especially if you are sustaining ritualistic meaning continual patterned behavior from another over and over and over again which is what i call ritualistic satanic um inflicted abuse over and over again that has affected your mind and your emotions to the extent that you just kind of go to another place inside like well I, i'm not going to be able to escape this and it is what it is and then you stuff things down as much as that happens by other others in this realm over time do you know what else happens you can traumatize yourself you can abuse yourself you can afflict yourself you can you can be lost in the demonic realm you can be lost 
inside of their thinking processes and what they're sending you to affiliate with. With no sight, nothing in your sight of light and hope. Now, in the past, I didn't understand these things. I didn't know how to help someone, including myself, to to be healed by the Lord and to come out of bondage and oppression by the devil and by death and hell, by being far away from where God is, meaning far away from peace and love and, and belief in that, a real strong belief in God's love for me and walking in it and seemed to really reinforce all the time the opposite. Kind of like, you can't tell me that I'm loved and I'm this, that, and the other and accepted and um, looked at as beautiful and precious in this world because I would look at what I would, these memories, right? Because when you're in trap, these memories play over and over in your subconscious and they'll bring up these situations that happened in your past that proves your point is right, which is why I was speaking about the headship thing that can happen when you're in a dungeon room. There's a headship that's going on in there, and it is not Christ. And that headship is leading you, and you've come into agreement with that headship. And it is hell and the inhabitants of hell that are enforcing that. And if we don't know those things, how can we help anyone with that? If you don't know those things, how can you even come out of agreement with those things? Psychology will hit it from a psyche standpoint only, your mind, but many re- there's many reasons why that doesn't take. Because if you don't hit the heart and the soul of the matters and the spiritual forces of influence behind it, you can try to put a band-aid on the mind. You can try to tell the mind to behave this way and do this and behavioral therapy and all of that. Um, but when you're actually under the headship of a demonic fallen principality because death is one of the highest ones death is the last foe will overcome right so you know you're dealing with a high principality at that point but principle one over death when that's the case if you're not going to hit them from spiritual from the spiritual standpoint of the high king himself going in with you on that battle it's going to be really difficult to band-aid the mind with well you just need to think positively and you need to change your behavior and get up every day and do this this and this that stuff is very beneficial don't get me wrong I am not saying it's not but I'm saying if if you don't get the root of the plant out it'll grow back no matter how many times you're cutting it off at the surface meaning your conscious life and in and in your outer court walking in your hands and your feet and what you do you got to get to the root and the root is spiritual but if we didn't, if we didn't, if I didn't know this before and you don't, you know, you don't know this, how can you help yourself or anyone else with that? How can you battle even from a distance in intercessive help for them? How can you work with the high priest to intercede and to come into agreement with the high priest himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, interceding and cutting off, binding up principalities in the heavens? by the Lord, not you alone, you're coming into agreement with him, but that he'll bind up these forces in every demonic entity, uh, every fallen entity in any way, shape, or form, linked to in any way, shape, or form, the principality of death and suicide and or rejection, betrayal, and whatever else he brings up, right? If you don't know how to do that, well, you were bankrupt. You didn't have that then. But if you do understand this now, you have something more to work with. And you can be interceding alone outside of even being in contact with that person over that person's life taking spiritual responsibility as if you are that person being a proxy which means that this person if they were in their right mind would stand for this this and this but they're not and i can with you now is there a way shape or form that we can affect this you and me together to our gathered in your name to do your will sir and every single time i have found him show me that there's something that can be done one of those some things that can be done even in hindsight after someone has departed from this realm is retroactive prayer 
and retroactive declarations of love. What do I mean by that? You know, you're a very, very powerful being. Just the fact that you're made in God's image alone, because he is a very, very powerful being. In fact, the most powerful, but you understand my point. So when you couple with God and God's outside of time, he showed me time like a filing cabinet and he pulls it out and he can pick any era, any century, any decade, any year, any day, any hour, any minute, any second. You can understand what I'm saying. And so he's outside of it and he controls all of it. And so all he has to do is pull up the file, open it up and interject things in there. So that filing cabinet of time is outside of time. It's in the eternal realm with God. We are inside of time. And so often, oftentimes, <laughs> we will we'll lock ourselves in mentally in this realm thinking, well, it's already passed. There's nothing I can do. Well, you may, you may actually be able to raise the dead. You know, so let's not discount that. But you may not be able to have the the luxury of pulling someone back into this realm. But you do have the ability to go back in time and speak to their spirit and their soul the truth of exactly what you, the value you see them as and the love that you have for them. And with that, simultaneously ask God to, in the in-between stages of when they're going through what they're going to go through and do, please meet them there. And please show them the prayer that I'm praying and what I'm saying and give them an opportunity to accept you in the in-between. Because, folks, there is an in-between. Even if it's so many seconds of what we would consider seconds, God stops those seconds, interjects, and there's, it's timeless right there, right then. Okay? And so there's something you can do with retroactive prayer, which is something that, like I said in the beginning, when you have been broken and hurt so much in your life, when the Lord comes around and says, I can take that pain from you right now by showing you what I call loopholes, Janet, I call loopholes. God just calls reality with him, true reality. And the loophole is that there's retroactive things you can do because we're inside time, but you're also outside of time because you're in Christ and you're a timeless being. You're an eternal being. You can tap into the eternal realm anytime that you and God choose to do so, and you can interject things. There are times I go back in history when I read scripture and say, you know what they needed right here? This is what I'm going to pray over their life, and I'm going to ask you to somehow, some way, apply that. And I just by faith believe he is because that's what he'll tell me he'll do. And he'll show people that in some way, shape, or form, the people that even lived in the scriptures. And uh, how I know this works is that I have worked with coma patients with the Lord who are somewhere stuck in between. And they have been in states of hell and they have been in states of darkness where I have found them. Now, granted, these people were not believers, so that should have some bearing of understanding for you. Um, but in those situations, I saw the Lord well, as I tagged along with him, I saw the ways in which we're able to affect even the in-between and two different outcomes. One still ended up passing from this existence to the eternal, but the other person came out of it and both were a blessing. And here's why. The first one that did not make it over, uh, the Lord met him in the in-between and I literally watched the Lord and I pull that person from hell with the, with the proverbial gnashing of teeth and the voices. I cannot even explain to you what a sea of tormented voices sounds like, but we were pulling that person from that and I had to speak very loudly so they could follow my voice and come to the Lord and I come to the light. And then, then I saw the Lord take that person away from me. Now this didn't happen with the other person. But this particular person had not received the Lord in the way that he should have at that time. And um, if he would have lived any longer, he still wouldn't have chosen the Lord. If he would have put him back into this realm, the Lord showed me that he would not have chosen him the way that he did right then and there because of that intercession and that um, interjecting. Like he literally looked at this guy and was like, do you see what she's doing right now? And how much she loves you. I have to answer her prayer. Would you like to receive me now? And in that moment, there's no evil. There's no nothing. In fact, they have just experienced all of that. And they have the opportunity to be in complete love and light and acceptance. And he accepted the Lord at that point and went on to heaven with him. And I didn't get to hear what they were speaking about. 
but I do know that that person's interceding for me and many others and fulfilling things on the other side that they should have, um, as the Lord had ide the ideal story written for each person accomplished in this realm, but by free will did not. The the other lady that was a friend also of the of the family um she came back and when she came back i had spent a week with the lord and her in the spirit realm and she was tagging along with my life he literally hooked her spirit to us and in some ways possibly her soul because because when she came out of it and everyone thought she wasn't going to survive and all the scans and all the brain activity and all this medical relatives the husband and my sister who is a medical they're both a nurse anesthetist were like sounding good they're you know they're gonna pull the plug yada yada and so they pull the plug she wakes up and says what happened and also i think god is calling me which then led to a whole bunch of things with um, getting getting the lord to her and witnessing to her the whole true gospel of christ and her receiving jesus in this realm etc and so on and then her marriage reconciling and her being together again with her kids and her husband in the same house. And just, I mean, now everything is perfect in her life now, but just incredible, credible growth and things. There's always something that can be done. And so I've seen God work in the in the in-between coma stage. So I know that there's an in-between stage between life and death. And there's a lot you can do, even in retroactive prayer. And that's when the Lord said, now, have you said everything you wanted to say to that person that took their life? Yes, sir. Have you interceded now like you would have if you would have had the opportunity? And I said, yes. And he goes, then let it go and give it to me because it's all been taken care of. Meaning that it wasn't my responsibility anyway. It's just that I was allowed and gifted the opportunity in the timeless realm to speak to that person's spirit and let them know exactly what they meant to me. And that I wish that things could have been different and you could have known all of these things and that I would have known what I know now, but I didn't. And, um, you know, I apologize for that. But, but I also want you to know that I'm working with God now in a retroactive prayer. And that all takes place now. But you know what? The Lord will interject that way back when. It's just incredible what you can do outside of time. There is, if there's a will, there's a way with God. And he is wanting us to understand that there's no reason for survivor's guilt whatsoever. It's a phantom thing that shouldn't exist for the child of God because there's always something you can do. And we learn from these things that if you're getting a prompting in any way, shape, or form, go tell that person what they mean. Speak to them. Be brave and speak to them about spiritual matters. And if you don't know how to specifically help them, then seek someone that may understand these things and be able to help is it but because there is a lot of spiritual warfare that can be done there is a lot of healing that can take place but it, you know we didn't know what we didn't know when we didn't know it and now we do we didn't know christ in the way that we do now and now we do we, we weren't healed in the ways before that we weren't but now we can be and we are in many ways and so i thank the lord when he shows me ways to let things go it really really release it to him knowing because really the reason we have a hard time in this life is with sudden death is two things you know obviously like two things and this obviously because you care and you're gonna miss the person okay but one you feel like you would have done something differently could you have had the chance so there you go retroactive prayers and declarations speaking directly to the spirit of the person the spirit of the person is eternal right and god is eternal right there outside of time but the other reason is is because there is pride involved on our part and it's going to be it's going to be a tough one to hear but there really is meaning self-focus because one, you wish you would have done things differently and you think that somehow if you would have that they might be here. First of all, that's a very, um, 
okay, God can't even override someone's free will. And when someone resolutely makes up their mind that they believe what they believe what they believe, and they know what they know what they know, some of them will not turn from that. Some are so affiliated and in lockstep link with hell and death that you're not going to be able to influence them, not even God. Okay? That's why it took place. But the other thing is that somehow we think that um, we could have saved them somehow by our own heart extended, our own mind extended, our own actions extended. If they just would have known, well, first of all, you can't convince somebody of something that they're already convinced of the opposite. That's what God's talking about. That's why God can't even help them in those, in those situations in this realm when they're so highly affiliated with death. You can understand now that you can intercede with God to come against that principality spiritually. These are things we understand now. But something else that rivals with the pride in there of of us thinking that, man, I maybe like I just could have been the one that could help in that way. The other thing that rivals that when when God couldn't even do it. I mean, right? That I mean, it's just from the spirit realm alone. The other thing that rivals that pridefully is that you think you have the responsibility somehow that you were supposed to. Okay, when we take on responsibility that's not ours, it's God's responsibility to be the Savior. When we think that it's dependent upon us and the burden is ours, and we... And that's not, it's God's responsibility to look over every single person and to be involved in every single person's life with great detail. He is their father, their creator, and their maker. We're just a sibling when it comes down to it in the, in this world. And God doesn't look to the children to be responsible 100% for the children or to carry such things as life and death is in your hands. Life and death is in God's hands. And, and, and when someone takes death into their own hands, that's sin number one, because you're fighting God and you're trying to write your own story. But there are reasons why, and he's very compassionate about that. He understands they're not in their right mind, nor do they understand their true identity and their true value. But when we think that we're supposed to be God, we're walking in sin. When you think it's supposed to be your responsibility and it's actually God's, you're actually stepping against God in that, and that's sin. When you think that if you could have done something and God couldn't even do it, that's sin because you've now placed yourself higher than God. I could have done something, though. I could have done something. Hmm. You might have been able to relieve yourself of speaking the truth to that person, but it doesn't mean that they would have received it deep inside their heart. When you try to take God's responsibilities onto yourself, you are, you're stealing something from God or attempting to, that is sin. We have to know our place and we have to know that we're under God and at best we're supplemental tools for God. And God is the one that's responsible for all of his creation. He owns it. You don't. I don't. We can tell that creation that he made how incredibly valuable they are. And if you know how to do spiritual warfare, you could, you can help with that. Okay? But ultimately, you can't go inside that person and make things click and make sense. You can't you can't shake them up and put them in their right mind and and make them stay in their right mind. You cannot make them become unaffiliated with death and hell. They have to want to come out of it. They have to want to come to the light and the truth. And that's not you. At best, you're a tool that can help bring the light and the truth to them, which is Jesus, the word. But they still have to 
they have to uncouple from death and lies and darkness and hell and, and, and oppression. And they have to be willing to come into the truth. These are things we can intercede and pray for. But to think that with our involvement, things might have gone differently is you taking on the burden of God to yourself. God is going to do everything he possibly can from the spirit realm to reach that person, even in the in-between. So even your retroactive prayers now make a difference, okay? That should give you some relief. Speaking to the person and retroactively praying that God intercedes in the in-between makes a huge difference because he'll go, you hear that? You see that? That hasn't happened yet but it's going to, and I'm showing you now, and he reaches them. So number one, that gives you a great ability to let things go, which is the whole point, because if you continue to carry it, why? Why? The Lord ha ha has the ability to, for you to be able to let it go by doing what you, sh what you think you should have done then, or what you could have done then now, and then in interjecting it into the eternal, timeless realm and applying it when God needs to apply it. Do something about it now, you can, and then let it go. Because everything that you would have said, you can say now. Everything that you would have done, you can do now. There's never, I, I haven't found with God a way in which something cannot be affected. And even in, even in hind, after the fact, in hindsight. Just God has a filing cabinet called time and he can open it and interject anything at any time. No pun intended. But for you to carry what is God's, for you to try to take what is God's responsibility and put it on yourself is sin. And it is unnecessary. Because you can still make a difference outside of time. But ultimately, it will not be you that stands before them in the in-between. It'll be the Lord. It will not be you that saves them. It'll be the Lord. It'll not be you that is the truth that meets them and you that is the absolute pure love. It'll be the Lord. Let go of trying to take what is God's upon yourself. Come out of sin. Because it feels, it don't feel good either, does it? Because you're estranged from God in those moments. He looks at us with compassion and says, why are you trying to carry what is mine to carry? Give it back. Speak to me your heart. Open up your heart and open up to the person in the spirit realm. Open up. Speak the things that you needed to speak. Express it. Push it from the center of yourself and give it to me and I'm going to bring it to them. There is beauty in that surrender. And so if you want to be somebody who can make a difference and did make a difference, do that. Walk away today having done that and releasing it to the Lord and be in a whole new place, in a healed place, a healed space in, inside the spirit realm with the Lord where you're hugging the Lord now and that person and every one of you knows that you did everything you could have done. That is a brilliant release and a salvation in and of itself. Give back what is God's for God to take care of. It's not yours to carry. Come back into union with him and then come back into the place of we did everything we could have done and I am at peace with that, God. It's an incredible space to be in instead. It really is. Time only exists here, folks. And oftentimes we look at it as linear, like a straight line. Once you pass this point, you can't come back to it. That is such a fallacy. <laughs> if you could see how many times um, that the Lord has shown me that time is circular and all things will come back to where they started. Once you know that time is circular, then wherever that point is where that person departed from here, that's not the end of the story. Loop back and speak and do. Is that person eternal? Yes, they are. Are you eternal? Yes, you are. Is that person in eternity now? Yes, they are. Are you? Yes, you are. You're an eternal being. And in Christ, you are in eternity already, as well as in, in, in time and space. 
you can affect all those realms. What do I mean? Uh, you working with God and staying in the truth now and, and doing what you can do in the eternal helps that person and helps God and helps your eternal spirit. But also you doing that now helps your eternal soul in this realm and helps to release a lot of things from your body that you kept and pushed down because memory cells hold memory. So you're actually releasing all of this to the Lord and it's going to affect every part of you. Not only that, but you're going to learn strategies to help others that you can bring them peace and surrender. And they are going to be able to step into the place of, I did something about it. And then I left it with the Lord. And then you're going to come out of missing them so much. You can't, here's why. You, once you start remembering that they're eternal and you're eternal and that you can actually still speak to them eternally and the Lord has windows open, portals and openings, and they can see your light and your sound and they can see the pureness of your heart pushing towards them, then you'll start to remember that this uh, this realm is a facade. It's not the real realm. So go hang out with them in the real realm. Go hang out with them in Christ Jesus. Go remember them and speak to the to the Lord about them in, in all the beautiful memories that you have. Celebrate them in that space. Because he will have applied. He told me this. I was going to say he will have applied everything as the two of you couple together to ask him to do that. And when, when, when you come into the reality that the Lord can do things that we think are impossible. You remember things like what he said to me. He said to me, mm, did I not say that you know, those that live upright with me in righteousness, I'll bless their so many generations down the line, right? I said, yes. He goes, do you think that that just means your children alone, like your children that you birthed in the physical? Or do you think that it means your loved ones and the spiritual um, children that you're helping me with in this realm? And I hadn't really thought about that. And he said, I'm telling you myself that if you continue to live proper with me in this place, there's a lot we can do, which is that I will reach everyone you care about even through your retroactive prayers and your heart, your pushing from your heart, all the beauty and love that you have for them, especially that, I will use every bit of that to give them every opportunity to receive me, even if it's in the in-between stages of passing from this realm to the next. Do you know how much relief that gives you? How much surrender from your heart and to be able to walk in contentment? because you're never going to be able to save anybody, but Christ can and does. And so really it's, it's been this, what I call this jovial fun. Um, it's not always fun circumstances that lead me to this, but this jovial fun time with him to say, how can we have a very positive beneficial effect on this situation? Even though in this realm right now in time and space, it's already played out. How can we affect that though for the, for the best betterment that we can and again and again he shows me ways and one of those ways is to tap into the eternal one of those ways is to remember that um time itself is not linear it's not a straight line and once you pass a situation there's nothing you can do about it it's quite the opposite of that it's a situation where it's circular and you can loop back and the lord can pull out the filing cabinet of time at any time and interject things and that's part of co-creating with us in this realm he told me a long time ago if there's a will there's a way always with god what he wants you to do is tap into the creative with him. He really, really wants us to tap into being creative with him. This realm is supposed to be a realm that we work with God. Walk and talk in the cool of the day. Just because it's material, meaning you have a material body, does not change anything of how, as in heaven, so in earth. Don't you walk with God? like? When you picture heaven and you're there and you're with God and you're not here anymore at all, don't you picture walking and talking with him, communing with him, um, creating things with him, having fun with him and loving others with him and enjoying all things? Uh, do that here. 
in your body. Meaning, walk in that realm while you're in a body here. Go into heaven and see what you would do in heaven towards that person or that or that situation if it needed help and do it here. Work your eternal person in the temporal realm. When you do that, it has an eternal effect, a life-giving effect on your soul and your body here. That's how I release all of these things that were unexpected to me and suddenly uh, suddenly to me but to God they were not and so then I go back into the eternal realm and go you saw this coming I didn't I'm seeing it play out in time and space but time and space is not all that exists the eternal exists and I actually want to have a conversation in the eternal with you even though I'm in a body here like my consciousness is is tied here however my consciousness is also in the eternal and and I'd like to talk to you about all my options in the eternal realm, not the, you know, temporal realm alone. Because when we become carnally minded, meaning temp temporal, temporal realm, material realm minded only, we panic as if everything is a loss when time passes. And once you exit time and you go back into the eternal, you realize that all things still exist there. The person still exists there. The love still exists there. The answers still exist there. And you'll go tap into something and take it from that realm into this realm and it'll have a profound effect on you. Like praying retroactive prayers. Prayers that right now are after the fact, but God will pull the filing cabinet and interject that way back when it was taking place. In the seconds and moments, the perfect timing. You see, that's why there's no reason to panic. He doesn't panic. There, There's always something that he's doing on both sides, the eternal realm and this temporal realm. All the time, there's something that can be done and is being done. And so it's the difference between uncoupling from this and all you see down here and going back and coupling with him where he is there, where he sees all things all at the same time, this realm and the eternal and all the possibilities in between. When we fall into carnally mindedness, we panic. Understandably, it's opposite of the spirit. It does not obey the laws of the spirit. And nor indeed can it because it's, it's completely opposite. That's what scripture tells you. So we have to go back into the spirit in those moments when deep despair is overtaking us. Because, okay, you could, almost any reason that I've found deep despair for someone leaving, um, again, is a phantom thing. But we make it like become so real and big. Well, I'm going to miss them. Okay, well, you're going to go through so many years uh, without them. True, but it's a blink, like an eyelash floating in the wind of eternity uh, for you to go through. And on the other side, they're going to be there. I truly believe that pretty much, pretty much anybody that the Lord met in the in-between, okay, in-between this world and the final destination sort of space or hell that holds you till the final destination, right? Or heaven. There's moments in between that I call loophole and God calls just reality that can be, um, it's a, it's a space, it's a place, it's a, it's a literal spiritual space that you can walk in with God and a lot is accomplished there, he just said. And so I, I find that like, if you're, go if you're going to miss them for just a moment in this realm, and and you focus so hardcore on that, you've lost sight of the fact that you can walk and talk with them in the cool of the day in the eternal right now in Christ. Because he told me again that um, if you work these things with me, I mean, you're staying, you know, in a good relationship with me and you honor me in these ways and you will move in the spirit realm with me and you'll intercede on behalf of someone's life. And you will you will of your free will do these things, coupling with God and life and love and interject and push it from you, coupling with me. I have to honor that you're honoring the king, you're honoring life, you're honoring love. You're honoring salvation and rescue. <laughs> You've actually coupled with me in the spirit realm. And when there's no fear involved, when you're like, oh no, my dad's going to take care of this. And you reject everything from the carnal temporal realm and you walk with him in the spirit, he'll accomplish what you're setting out to do because it's his will. Is it not his will to work life and salvation and rescue <laughs> and love? It is. 
So when we couple with him in those ways, he told me, I will give them, I will meet them in the in-between. It's a spiritual space and I'll give them every opportunity outside of the influence of sin and hell and death and the reprobate mind. All of that, I'll give them an opportunity. I've not found one person who will turn them down in that space. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I'm saying I have not found one person that has turned him down yet when I look and ask them if they're with him now. That ought to give us a lot of peace and knowing that you're going to see them again. Not only that, but even if you thought I'll never see them again and and you truly believe they're in hell or whatever, and do you know that the, on the other side, the Lord can let you step back into um, time and space and revisit all of those memories that you had with that person that were amazing outside of any kind of sorrow and sadness. There's just, there's so many possibilities that are available with God. You know, there is going to be no tears in heaven, right? Where every eye is wiped and dried. If you're worried that they're in hell, then deal with that with God as well. My concern is that they didn't receive you and accept you in this lifetime in, while they were alive. Well, all right, well, what about the in-between? That's a spiritual space you and God can walk. I've been there so many times with the Lord and others. It's a timeless realm, and it, there is no influence of evil. There's no reprobate mind. There's nothing going on in that place except someone's free will and experiencing God, truth, love, and light right there, right now. He desires today, his whole goal in this is to relieve many of you that are carrying survivor's guilt, which is a phantom thing. It ought not exist because you can lay it down today. You can lay it down. They, they, we're not able to conquer those spiritual demons in this realm, folks. And there's reasons why. But that doesn't mean that, it that it's a hopeless situation that you can't do anything about. There is the ability to, to tap into the eternal timeless realm and allow God with you together to pull out that filing cabinet and do what you want, what you think that you should have done then or you wanted to do it now because you can. And so you can set yourself free. You can literally walk away asking God, God, please connect me by your will. You know, let's let this be your will. But by your will, let me connect to you and speak to you and that person's spirit what I, and soul what I wish I would have then or what I know now. And please apply that to their life in the in-between. And let it go, because he will. It's a literal spiritual space. I call it the coma realm, but it's so much more than that. Meaning to, it's in between life, this material plane, and, and the eternal plane or realm. It's like, uh, he's showing me right now, it's like a, um, you know when you, like sometimes you'll go into a doctor's office and there's like... Um, a waiting, a waiting room and, or like if you go in for like psychological therapy, there can sometimes be an exit room. And the exit room is between when you left the doctor's office and you're actually walking out to the parking lot or in the hallway to leave the building. There's this gather yourself together before you do kind of exit room. That's what that plane of existence is in the spirit realm. And it's, it's only you and God and the persons that are there in the pureness of his love, his light, his mercy, his grace, his person, and you. So there's something you can do about that. You can release it today. You can do what you think you should have done and release yourself from all of that. Not just survivor's guilt, but all of the woulda, coulda, shouldas. You can release that today. And believe you, be, be, believe me, you. God is love and he's life and he's salvation and he's truth. And if you are going to couple with him in this life in any way, shape or form with all of that and desire to fight evil and darkness and to slay it like he does, he going to work with you. He'll work with a two year old that can speak forth from their heart and in truth in this realm. I guarantee if you're listening to this, you're likely older than two years old in this realm. 
it, that means he'll work with any of us from the purity of a pure stance of our heart. If you're with him in any way, shape, or form, I don't care where you are on your walk with him. If you're going to extend love and mercy and grace and light and, and salvation and rescue and want to get that to someone else, he is all of that. You, you cannot even push that forward without being in coupling with him. Work your eternal person, please. That means walk in the spirit with God. Your spirit with his spirit and your soul can tag along. Your conscious man right now can tag along. And when you'll do that and you'll work from the eternal realm and not from this time and space layer or realm or plane of existence, when you'll move from the eternal it and with your consciousness, your soul, your soul will benefit from it in, the, in this realm and you'll be able to release and let go. You'll be able to stop sinning and holding that because you're holding something that is God's to hold and you're trying to take it from him and hold it as if it's your responsibility to hold all responsibility over a person's life. And it's not. You're the created, not the creator. You're a sibling to that person in this realm. We all came from the same father. And he's not asking the child to hold the other child's life together and with all responsibility of it. You're supplemental at best. It's just the truth. You're a tool at best. You're a loving vessel at best that can extend things towards another in this realm. But he's the, he is the eternal father. He is the self-existent eternal one called Jehovah. He made the creation that you love very deeply. He made you. He made everything. It's his responsibility. Give him back his responsibilities. Release that back to him today. Apologize and repent for trying to carry and take what's God's upon yourself. In essence, it's trying to steal from God. I know that that's not our heart's intention, but you're trying to take something that is God's and God is responsible for it. It's his belonging. That person is his belonging and and working with that person to the to the best of his ability in every way, shape or form in this realm and every other is his responsibility, not yours. You are at best supplemental. Stop being a supplemental, loving, caring vessel in this world who's trying to carry the weight that God alone can only carry and the responsibility that is only God's to carry in this realm. Give it back. Release it. Repent. Renounce. Renounce any phantom guilt responsibility that you took upon yourself because there is actually something you can do about it. And you can work the eternal realm, the timeless realm with God. And you can retroactively speak. Which really, really, it, it's not even retroactive. It's you entering the timeless realm and speaking into the timeless realm uh, to the person and to the situation. And then God breathing it back out into the timed realm, pulling up that file, opening it up and interjecting it. That is what intercession is. And he's wanting to help many of us to release today that is part of salvation and so it's this purge and release there are things that we have inside of us that we ought not be having inside of us and your souls and your bodies that hold the cells that hold memory all all of your soul and your body are suffering in ways your mind your emotions it's playing back things that are accusing you and of guilt you're guilty of this you're guilty of and it's a phantom guilt and it doesn't need to exist it's like the valley of the shadow of death it's not even death it's a shadow of death it's a phantom thing because to the child of god it's phantom because there's no such thing as death you cannot literally be tied to god and and untied from god at the same time death is untied from god it's untethered to life it's literally the opposite. So it's it's a shadow of death for us. It's like this big bark from a dog. A bark is a sound that comes at you. It literally cannot harm you in the physical. But if it but if you allow it to frighten you, just the bark alone, that's the phantom part of the dog, right? The dog hasn't physically bitten you. It hasn't tackled you. It hasn't um, you know, dragged you away. No, it's just the bark. It's the shadow of death, meaning that life has overcome death completely already. Christ already dealt with all of that. And so once you go into the eternal, death is just a shadow thing that was barking really loudly in this realm. Once you step into the eternal, you see that it's not even there at all. Not in Christ, not, not with him in those heavenly spaces. 
And that's where you can speak freely and in love and in light and in rescue. And you can say everything you needed to say. And you can interject every prayer that you wish you would have prayed before because you actually are there right then and, and, and now. Wherever you need to be, whenever you need to be there, you're there now. There's freedom in that. There's purging and letting go of this phantom chains that will hold us down as if we shoulda, coulda, woulda. Well, why stay there? Because you, you can. You can. There's no shoulda, woulda, coulda anymore. You can. Just go do it. Then the woulda, shoulda, coulda can't hold you down anymore. Intercession frees you. Walking in the eternal frees you from being chained to, to the carnal and minding as if as if this is all there is. It's not. This is this this is an eyelash in the wind of eternity. Your whole life here is an eyelash floating in the in the in the sea of eternity. It's just a speck. It's real, it exists, but it's just a speck. Go move in the sea, not the speck. Go move in the eternal. Go move in the sea. Go move in the wide open expanse of a bazillion different possibilities. Go dream with God again. Come out of the place of entrapment and and um, chains that makes you think there's not you have no options. Okay, that's death. That's hell, a brush of state, and it's temporal. Come out of the eyelash. And go into the sea that the eyelash is floating in. Go into the eternal where there is endless possibilities of creative potential that you and God can work together. What I call loopholes and God calls true reality. Go find a loophole with God. Sit and think. Mm. Sit in the space of, mm. if there was something we could do, what would that look like? Go entertain that thought with God. That's life-giving life-giving because the truth is the prison doors are open there is no shackles on you they've already been unlocked and you can come out anytime you want to do not allow the enemy to make you think that the, they succeeded in that person who took their life and there's nothing you can do and now they're going to succeed at keeping you trapped in a mentality of the temporal material realm as if there's nothing you can do you eternal beautiful being you <laughs> Go move in the spirit. Repent for not moving in the spirit. Go move in the spirit. Go move in the eternal with God. Forget about everything that you were walking in before this and go walk anew. The mercies are new today. The, uh, the sea of possibilities are available to you today. I've only given you some of what God and I have moved in in the spirit realm as, as things that he has shown me are possible because I said, mm, I, and here's how I come to these conclusions with him too, as I start to look at him again and I'm like, man, you're outside of time. And then he'll go, hmm, are you not in me? And I'm like, yes. And he goes, and also, are you not an eternal being who accepted eternal life a long time ago with me? And I'm like, yeah, are you not somebody who moves in this realm too? And then you start to go, yes, sir. And he's like, well, let me show you what time looks like. And then he showed me a filing cabinet. I mean, it's easy, easy peasy for God to pull out the filing cabinet. I may not understand all of the ways in which all the realms work and, and the structure of it and all that, but it's as easy as a filing cabinet to him. And that's what he showed me. And I can relate to that. It's easy enough for me to go walk over and pull the drawer of a filing cabinet out. But you know, in order to pull the drawer of the filing cabinet out, I have to be in the eternal space to begin with. You are outside the filing cabinet, right? Your arm reaches forward and you open that door. <laughs> You open the door of possibility in time. That's beautiful. But you're actually the being that's standing outside of that filing cabinet. you got to be in the eternal space and then you can interject stuff here. This is what it means to as in heaven, so in earth it. <laughs> Let your earth be free today in that. Father, I pray that this blesses everyone. I pray that you show them today that even the things that are suddenly to us here are only suddenly in this realm. And if we'll actually exit this realm and enter back into the eternal, we can sit there with the Lord and go, you saw this coming a long time ago, which means that I should relax in this because 
A, you did everything um, all the way up until that point that that person exited this realm already. However, we still have the ability outside of time and space in the eternal to affect even the moments that they were still here in this plane. We can pull back that drawer, open it up, go right into five minutes before they exited this place or whatever, and we can interject and then dream it up with God literally have a conversation with him where all things are possible to you because they are all things with god are possible correct all things <laughs> wait how much of creation does he own all mm. so that includes time right yes and he said he's going to bless you and your generations to follow right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a generation is not just your children and your children's children down your lineage line. A generation that he's going to bless is the people that are alive while you're alive that you care about. Because they're your siblings. They came as siblings, right? Is that not somebody that is in your eternal lineage line anyway? Sibling to sibling. The generations. I talk about all these matters with God and he delights in doing those things. So go dream with God today. Go enter the eternal space where, where it's a sea of possibilities and answers. And then go find that little eyelash, that life floating in the eternal, right? That temporal life floating in the eternal. And then go with your sea of possibilities and interject and intercede into that life from outside time from the space of eternal there's freedom in that folks there's so much freedom he wants to bring to us and so much healing and i pray that this has been a blessing to you today father i pray that your children will engage you in this i pray that when these circumstances come in our future with people that are still alive today and all of a sudden tomorrow is that suddenly that pops up i pray we'll remember all these things and i pray that not only will we remember but we'll look at someone else who's going through it and we will we will speak to them the truths that we have discovered today with you in this and with working with you because there's freedom any situation that's ever loomed over us as we look back through our lives, go intercede on behalf of that Ch child of God. That's what we're saying. Go intercede. Go step into the eternal realm over that and then release it Cause, because you can do whatever it is you think you should have done. You can say whatever it is you think you should have said in the eternal realm and it exists there and it's very real there. The, the eternal spiritual realm is re more real than this realm. This realm is just the broken facade where you have the ability to work with the Spirit of God here and walk true and real. Uh, but not everybody does. And you can affect this realm. You can affect time and space like a filing cabinet. Pull it out and do what you should have done or said or whatever it is that that um, the voice of condemnation has been saying to you all along. And slay the beast and the voice of condemnation right then and there. Deal with that entity because it's a phantom entity and God's already crushed it. Go walk in wholeness. Be healed by the Lord today. Let him rescue you in this. Couple with him in it and watch the empowerment of God flood your whole entire being, including your soul, and set you free in many areas. I pray that you will do this with him today. And Father, I thank you for the beauty of who you are, and I thank you for the understanding a little more every day that you give to each and every one of us about you who are the eternal realm. Inside God, all things are possible. And this realm is actually still inside you, God. It is a plane of existence that's still inside of you and inside of God all things are possible, but we can also step right out of this and into the eternal, into the spaces that are outside of this in you, and we can think clearly <laughs> where all things are possible. And then we can bring that back in here and let it interject in a powerful way, setting things at shalom inside our minds, our hearts, our souls, our bodies, and all that is in time and space.
I thank you for this today and I will couple with anyone in the spirit that you are leading as sort of like a blank check. Anybody that needs someone to come into agreement with them in this, anyone that needs someone to intercede with you on behalf of their situations and their healing and to move in the spirit against all the entities that are trying to set themselves against uh, them in this realm, I will partner with you spiritually speaking, and with them in this. And uh, I'd like to see miracles moved on behalf of these people. And again, all glory and credit goes to you. God, you're incredible. And every day we're learning more about who you are and, and more about this realm and that it is just a plane of existence that actually can be uh, wielded and molded and conformed to God's will. And God's will and desire is to have a, a family and to have children that he can couple with and walk and talk in the cool of the day or the cool of the spirit with. And we can do that here. We can actually stop being material beings as the main forefront of who we are and we can become spiritual beings once again and moving from the power that is the center of us where God resides inside the king and the kingdom all there with all possibilities. And once we'll move from that realm in this realm, realm so it is as in heaven here. As in all things perfect and unified under the king, that is the way that it'll be here. And there is much more that we can do. And I look forward to it. I look forward to you and your mature ones coming forth and bringing this continued salvation and freedom to everyone in a plethora of different angles and areas within their lives and to assist you and couple with you in bringing heaven to earth and in bringing life over death and conquering that last foe of estrangement and oppression and to slay the phantom entities that try so very hard with their rhetoric and their speech to hold us down. I bless each and every one of your children who couples with you today to slay that beast and to be set free and to watch the victories one after another happen in the souls and the minds and the hearts and the emotions and the bodies and the, at a cellular level releasing things today because there is an answer with God and there is a solution to this and then it can rest and be left at the altar and at the throne of God himself in true and pure worship of God and life and salvation. And we love you.